They say to catch a criminal, you have to think like a criminal. And that's exactly what Boston police are trying to do with a controversial new tool the department wants to add to its crime-fighting arsenal, social media monitoring software. The technology would scan platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, looking for potential threats to the public or other criminal activity. To some, the idea is a logical step in how police should evolve in a digital age. To others, this is a potential serious invasion of privacy and cause for great concern. Commissioner Bill Evans tried to calm those fears when he joined us last week on Boston Public Radio. Stuff that's available to the public, that people put Mm -hmm. out there, that other people have access to. So we aren't invading anyone's right to privacy here because there's no expectation of privacy if you put it out there. We're not going to do anything different with this. All this is is technology that helps speed up the process. It makes it more efficient. This afternoon, the Boston City Council held a hearing on the proposal, which we paid for in part with a federal Homeland Security grant. Joining me to talk more about all this are Kate Crockford. Kate is director of the Technology for Liberty program at the Civil Liberties Union of Massachusetts. Kate, it's good to see you again. And former Watertown Police Chief Ed DeVoe, good to see you as you. well. Why are you so upset? Isn't the police commissioner right? Essentially, this is just a more efficient way to do what they could do by just looking at someone's page with the human eye. It's just a more efficient method, isn't it? Well, that's actually part of the problem. So the analogy that um, Commissioner Evans used, I don't personally like. What, I, you know, what is, I think, more appropriate is thinking about this analogy. A Boston police officer could sit outside your home, Jim, and take photographs of everyone who goes in and everyone who goes out and make detailed notes about what they were wearing, their license plate mm-hmm. number, et cetera, and put that in a, in a centralized dossier that includes the records of all of your family members, similar records, and all of your professional contacts and all of your friends. And maybe that information is shared with the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. Mm-hmm. That would actually be legal under current statutes and constitutional precedent because you're in public, right? Unless you have a fence... The police can sit in front of your street and take those notes and take those photographs. Um, So So you're saying they can do it, they just shouldn't do it. Well, so there are a couple, it's it's a complicated issue. So yes, they can do it, right? Technology changes things. So whereas in the olden days, or even with the example I just gave, cops couldn't actually do that to everybody in Boston, right? There aren't enough cops. And if they did do it to even one person, and that person wasn't suspected of a serious crime... People like you and I, I imagine, would think that that was wrong. But your problem, Kate, just so I understand, is not even with the software. Your problem is with the behavior to begin with. You don't want them doing it on an individual basis. You don't want them doing it on a collective basis with the software. Is that not a correct statement? No. What what I'm trying to say is that if law enforcement suspects someone of criminal activity, they can certainly look at their Twitter page, their Facebook page, and try to find out if there's evidence there to help them uh-huh. make an arrest to get someone who's potentially dangerous. You're worried there's going to be a wider dragnet. Software. Well, that's clearly what the, what the software facilitates. Well, I mean, that's that, the purpose of it. Is the, isn't that a legitimate concern? I don't want them, if I'm in a particular geographical area, which is how some of this software works, I don't want them capturing what I'm writing to somebody else. They're not going to do that. They're Why not? They're not going to look at everybody. There's not enough time. There's not enough time to sit in somebody's house that, that like she explained, um, we, have, we have to do police work. So it's important to, to do use the geo geo when something happens when orlando happened it was very important for the orlando police department to understand who was at that nightclub who was witnesses who could have been a suspect um and that's how these these software can be used that was after the fact after the fact yeah so a lot of it is going to be putting things back together the the, the shooting in boston with the wentworth uh police officers involved one person was arrested three more on the run you can go back and where you were involved how about the boston 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 marathon Marathon. i mean would you argue one of the reasons they were able to catch one Sir and I of brother and kill another was because there were cameras out on, on the street. It, they captured thousands and thousands and thousands of people. The only thing they did was go watch a marathon. Would you object to that too? No, no. Why I is mean, that any different than what you just described a minute ago, where there's innocent activity that's captured and there happen to be a couple of bad behaviors, but they are just in the larger crowd? So w- one of the main issues here is uh, government centralization of information, right? And uh, one issue about what happened at the marathon is that those were not centralized government cameras. Those were cameras from, you know, hotels what if and they restaurants. Were? And what things. if they were? That would be a problem. We shouldn't live in a surveillance state where the government can monitor everywhere everyone goes from camera to camera. A private camera on a building is okay, even if the government seizes it, but it's not okay if it's a government camera. What I'm saying is that there's a distinction between those two things, Jim. 
having cameras in individual establishments where, for example, if there's a crime, law enforcement can go and look at those cameras to see who is there. That's a totally different thing than a networked surveillance camera system that any law enforcement official, maybe even in, in D.C., uh -huh. under Trump's FBI or DHS, can get access to, to track people as they move throughout the city. You those know, you heard things. Commissioner Evans, who I know you know quite well, say a minute ago, we're not going to do the kinds of things that people like Kate are concerned about. But there are other departments. There was I was just reading today, the Oregon Department of Justice, they use something called digital stakeout. And they're monitor monitoring hashtags, which in the abstract sounds fine. Until you read, one of the hacks hashtags is Black Lives Matter. If you're concerned about the shooting of uh, young black men in this country by some of your fellow officers, you're going to be caught up in this, this sweep that's being done out there. So even if Boston is to be trusted, the whole concept is not to be trusted, is it? Well, I think there's a, the potential of any system. Is, is, there's, there's, there's chances for abuse. I, I think with checks and balances, and Boston will do it right, they'll be transparent. You, you know, when you run the license plate that we were talking about earlier, that gets tracked and we know exactly who ran that plate. So if there's uh -huh. any concern. So if somebody runs Black Lives Matter hashtag, you're going to know what department did it, what individual did it. But doesn't that you know, bother you that they're doing it to begin yeah, with? Yeah, but I think there's, that's why you have commanders that are going to make sure it doesn't happen. You, you know, run the that, checks and balances. You know, I know you had a city council. It seems to me that this is, a, first of all, you have no problem with body cameras, right? Body cameras, the Civil Liberties Union loves. I could get Depending on the policy. But wait a yeah. second, but I could get caught up. You, you have a cop with a body camera on. I could be doing something innocently, and I could be caught up in that image as well. Isn't it? So isn't the issue really what not the underlying surveillance, which I have problems with, I must say, but what the regulations and rules are, just like the commissioner. I know some of the groups, including the Civil Liberties Union, around body cameras, want to know about storage, collection. That's right. Well, isn't that the exact same kind of sort issue? Sort of, here? but they're, they're, it's sort of apples and oranges. I mean, what Why? we're dealing with here with the social media surveillance system is, first of all, a $1.4 million contract that they're potentially going to right. buy, right? And this just blows out of the water things that other cities have done. So I'm a little bit confused even why B BPD feels like it needs to spend so much money and what exactly it's going to buy. Um, for example, Los Angeles has spent about $70,000 over a period of three years on software. So like what do you this. suspect, so, that despite what Commissioner Evans said, they plan on doing something more nefarious than he I said? honestly don't know. I'm simply saying that it's a really large sum of taxpayer dollars to be spending on a program like this. And I would also just push back a little bit on what you said, Chief, which is that the BPD can be trusted with this kind of program. You know, a few years ago, my office at the ACLU put out a report based on Boston police documents showing that officials at the Boston Police Department were spying on Veterans for Peace, Code Pink. That was before Marty um, Walsh and before uh, Commissioner But this, the same people who run the brick are, are running the brick now. No, and the but policies, it was before the two leaders who were in charge that, of the city That may be true, department. but the policies have not changed to our knowledge. So the same exact policies that enabled that kind of monitoring of First Amendment protected speech. And this was people who were designated as extremists in these intelligence files that may have been shared with the FBI. I mean, you know... I think Mayor Walsh is a nice guy too, and I don't, you know, have any problem. Has nothing to do with being a nice guy. He just hasn't done what you, what that report accused his predecessor. Certainly, my point though having... is, is that the police department's policies remain the same. One last thing: we only have a couple of seconds left. One of the things Kate didn't mention, but I'm sure would have gotten to the chilling effect of this thing. I will think twice before I say something that I might not otherwise say. I don't plan to do anything bad to anybody, but I'm going to think twice about expressing myself on Facebook or Twitter for fear that something that I mean in jest or some or a hashtag I might put up. Are you not concerned about my privacy no, rights? No, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I think you're holding up a sign. It's, it's, you, you're, it's like you're there and you, you put it out for everybody to see. It's not anything spying or anything else like that. If there was a protest going on and the Boston police or a major city could, could and monitor that. And you can find out that most of the people are there for the right reasons, but there's a plan with, with social media going back and forth, and they're going to go down and try to shut 93 off. That's a public safety issue. Everybody wants this. This is going to work for a lot of different people. I know there's a lot of questions on both sides of it, but I think you jump in and you support the police department because they're doing a lot of things right. We've got to hold it there. Kate, nice to see you. Thank you Thanks very so much, much. Jim. Chief, pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you.